Hi, welcome back. This is our second session. Today we're going to be talking about positive discipline. This is Parenting Connections. This program was created by Dr. Green from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. My name is Joanne with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. I want to welcome you for our second session. Today we're going to be talking about positive discipline. One of the most challenging aspects of being a parent is deciding upon a style of discipline that is appropriate, effective, and the best interest of your child. As frustrating as it may be, it is entirely normal for children to test your limits and engage in inappropriate behaviors at times. How you respond to such behavior depends on a number of factors including your child's age and development stage, the personality and temperament of the child, and their behavior. In this session, our objectives are to increase awareness of the reasons for disciplining your child, to learn about the strengths and weaknesses of different types of styles, and to explore strategies for setting and enforcing healthy limits, also known as rules or boundaries. My question to you is, what is discipline? Sometimes, for many parents, the word discipline simply means punishment. While punishment is certainly a part of discipline, the word also brings with it many positive connotations. Discipline can also mean to teach, to provide instruction, guidance, training, punishment as well. Why discipline a child? You want to teach them, you want to guide them, you want to protect them, you want to promote self-discipline. Teaching them what is right and what is wrong. Guiding them, a lot of children need guidance. Your children need the attention and instruction that you can provide to guide them safely and productively through the early years of their lives. To protect them, this is when you teach them do not touch an electric cord outlet. To promote self-discipline, teaching your children when they are very young to distinguish between right and wrong and appropriate and inappropriate behaviors will make your job much easier when your child gets older. In this presentation, we are going to be talking about different styles of discipline. Here are the four different styles of discipline. Authoritarian, permissive, rejecting, neglecting, such as uninvolved, and authoritative. Let's start off with authoritarian disciplinary style. This is when parents demand submission and obedience without flexibility. Highly directive and controlling, often communicates poorly with children and express very little warmth. This is more like, you do it because I say so. With this style, authoritarian parents tend to use power over discipline, they use threats and intimidations to achieve desired behavior, and if you recall our session one over communication, we talk about not utilizing the threats. With this style, authority and parents tend to be rigid in approach to parenting. With this, the outcome utilizing this type of disciplinary style, children under the care of authority and parents tend to be conflicted, irritable, and distrust of others. So. We want our children to trust us. We want to build that connection, that trust. However, with this style, it is difficult to build a trust. Now the next style is permissive disciplinary style. Permissive parents are not controlling or restrictive. Basically, the parents let the children do whatever they want. They do not demand mature behaviors from children. They're warm and accepting, but allow children to do whatever they please. Now, as you know, children need to have rules. They need to have limits. Because once they go to, quote unquote, the real world, once they go to school, once they go to childcare, there are rules to follow. So it makes it very difficult for a child to understand the, how to follow the rules. Permissive parents tend to make fewer demands. They allow the children to regulate themselves, avoid confronting inappropriate behavior. Remember, we want to teach them, we want to provide guidance. So when a child is having an inappropriate behavior, this is when we want to teach them and guide them what they should be doing rather than what they should not be doing. Children raised by this type of style, parents tend to be less assertive, be less cognitively competent, they show less self-regulation and social responsibility. Now the third type is the uninvolved disciplinary style. 
This is rejecting, neglecting. Parents do not have any structure, organized discipline, or supervision their or supervise their child. Remember, children need to have structure. They need to know what time to wake up, what time they need to go take a nap, what time they eat. So creating a structure, creating a timeline is very important. It gives the kids an idea of what they're going to be doing next. Remember, being consistent is the key. This style is characterized by low control and low warmth. There's not that much love. It's basically do whatever you want. I'm not going to be here. Uninvolved parents actively reject or neglect their child. Uninvolved parents tend to provide little structure, establish few rules and guidelines, be absent of physically and emotionally being consistent. Remember, your children need your attention, they need your love and your support, so you need to presently be available for them. Building that trust, right? Building that communication. This is why it's very important to be attentive to your child. Children raised by uninvolved parents cope the worst and are the least competent of all the four different types of disciplinary skills. Now, let's talk about authoritative disciplinary style. According to research, this is the style that is proven to work. Um, this is where the child copes the best. This is when parents are firm but loving. There are rules, there are consequences, but at the end of the day, I love you. You know, these consequences may include timeouts, may include spanking, may include redirection, but they're constantly firm. They already know the rules. They do not bend the rules. Um, they negotiate with their, their children. They have high expectation for their children. If you have multiple children, you know what their expectations are. They're not the same. They're all different. So it's important for you to understand what a high expectation for that child requires. They express love and support. You're always there. Even, even though your child may fail, you're there to provide the love and the support that they do need. Authoritative parents tend to be flexible but firm. There's communication with your children. They ask their child, do they understand the rules? They explain why the rules are the way it is. They maintain control and discipline. They're, they set clear boundaries. Your child understands there's a different boundary. You're not best friends with your child. You have your parent adult responsibility versus a child's responsibility. The respect for an older person. Clearly communicate their expectations to their child. Follow through with appropriate consequences and follow through being consistent is the key. When you say you're going to do something, make sure that you follow with the appropriate consequences. If they do well and you mention, you know, if you do well or you, you complete clean your room, we are going um, outside for playtime. If they don't, well, you don't go outside. Um, there's times that, you know, we talk to our kids saying, you know what, you need to behave. We're going to go to the store, um, make sure that you don't have any tantrums. And if you behave, we'll get you a toy. What happens? Child starts crying, throws a tantrum. At the end of the day, they're given the toy. There's no consequences right there. So the children are very smart. They know um, if you bend the rules or you're not um, firm, they're still going to get what they want. So this is why it's very important to follow through with appropriate consequences. Reason with their child as well. The authoritative style of discipline fosters responsibility, cooperation, and self-regulation in children. There's a balanced approach to caring for their child, and this is the most effective style with your child. Now, have a realistic expectation. How do you develop this discipline? You have to have a realistic expectation. This requires the basic understanding of a child development. You know how your child is developing um, versus a 3-year-old to a 13-year-old, right? You um, have an idea on how the consequences, what they're capable of doing, and then what are their, their consequences on that. Having realistic expectation as a parent requires a basic of understanding of what, where your child lies on the development spectrum. This can be challenging because not all children develop at the same pace. For some children, their physical development outpaces their emotional or cognitive development. A common mistake made by parents is to assume that because a child is physically mature, the child is also emotionally mature. mature. All children do not develop at the same pace. Not all aspects of development occurs at once, just like I mentioned, are at the same pace. Parents cannot rely on one technique. 
You must take into account your child's temperament. So need for toolbox of a disciplinary techniques include timeouts, removing privileges, ignoring, redirecting, reasoning, behavior contracts, and positive reinforcements. Utilize all of these. Don't just use one technique. Sometimes you may have to t um, give, give them a timeout. Sometimes you may have to take away their iPad. Um, sometimes you have to ignore their behavior, of course, and make sure that they are safe. Redirect them. Show them how you want it to be done. Reason with them. A behavior contract, putting those stickers. Once they get, they meet a certain amount of stickers, they receive an incentive. Positive reinforcement, probably those, you know, great job. Thank you for helping me. That goes a long way. Communicate expectations clearly. Your kids need to understand what the expectations are. And we already talked about communicating, checking for understanding. Do your, does your child understand the expectation? Children need a clear boundary. Boundaries provide directions, routine, and structure. Remember, children need to have a routine, a structure. They already need to know what's going to happen next. Expectations should be clearly stated. When boundaries are violated, parents should give consequences. Remember, being firm, following through your consequences. When communicating rules or boundaries to your child, clearly state the rules. Check for understanding. Let them know the rules are non-negotiable. Make sure your child understands what is expected. Establish reasonable consequences. And like we mentioned, understand your child's expectations. Understand where they lie on the development spectrum. <clears throat> Distinction must be made between reasonable and unreasonable. Depend on the age and development of the stage of your child should be based on their behavior. Consequences should be in line with the offense. For example, a three-year-old who sneaks cookies before lunch versus a 13-year-old who fails to complete their assigned chores. So you have those age gaps, you have that maturity levels, they should be different types of consequences for that. Be loving yet firm. Just because we discipline our child, just because we give them consequences and we say no, does not mean we don't love them any less. Most effective parenting style is authoritative ones. Openly express your love, but expect compliance with your rules. Give consequences when boundaries are violated. In life, everything has consequences, right? As we get older, we are driving, right? There's a speed limit. Um, there's things that we shouldn't be doing, texting and driving. Uh, once we have a job, you know, we have to be on time. There's always consequences. So this is a great way to teach your kids consequences at a young age. Be consistent is the key. Essentials aspects of effective discipline. Do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it without, without guessing it. Do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Be consistent. Children pick up on inconsistencies in parental behavior. Parenting um, with your spouse or co-parenting, you all need to work together. Inconsistency leads to confusion and misbehavior. Parents need to be united in setting and enforcing the rules. That's when communication goes with your spouse or your um, co-parenting. Discipline in a positive way. We never want to belittle a child. We never want to hurt a child. Discipline because you w want what's best for your child. Remember, discipline tends to teach, guide, protect, and promote self-discipline. Avoid disciplining children out of anger. Just because you had a bad day, remember when we talked about communication. If you had a bad day, you're going to say horrible words that you don't mean, and you can't take that back. So if you're mad, take the time to cool off, go take a shower, get your alone time, because what's going to happen is if you're going to spank them, that spank may be a little too hard. Or if you're going to talk to them, maybe you're not thinking correctly and you might say some hurtful things. Screaming, yelling, and belittling children are not appropriate ways to discipline a child. Model appropriate behavior. Children tend to model behavior of parents. Remember, parents, you are the role model. You set the tone. Set a positive example for your child. So if you want them to be at home at a certain time, well, you too have to be home at a certain time as well. It's not expected for an adult parent to be going out with their friends and coming home at 2 in the morning, right? 
you we want them to be home at a certain time so you as an adult need to be home at a certain time if we don't want them to say bad words well parents should not be saying bad words in the household as well model behaviors you want them to adopt for example subtle differences with other adults in a respectful manner so we're speaking with our spouse there shouldn't be an exchange of bad words going on there shouldn't be any violence going on because your children are still seeing that listen to your child communicate in a positive way discover origins of the misbehavior there is a reason why your child is misbehaving they may be tired they may be hungry they may be frustrated they may want your attention they may be having problems at school they're not understanding algebra as they feel like they're a failure problems with their friends find out what's going on communicate with your child find out the reason why they're misbehaving find the root cause of the behavior can prevent escalation of situations once you do find out remember let your child know that you're there for them you're going to be helping them you're there to support them build that trust make distinctions between a child and a child's behavior now the way we communicate can hurt an individual sometimes the people that we love the most we end up getting mad at because we think that they're going to forgive us label behaviors as unacceptable not your child let let your child know you're disappointed with their behavior not at the person for example a positive is your behavior was disappointing whereas something we don't want to say is you're a disappointment i hope you understand that learn from your mistake parents we don't have the answers right there is times where we parenting is about making mistakes but what it's about is learning from your mistakes. No parents have all the answers. We read so many books, you know, but sometimes our child does not read the book or does not it's not what is stated in the handout. So, we don't have those answers. Learn as you go. All parents make mistakes and that's okay. Speak with your friends who have um who are parents. See what they do. Learn from others as well. See get some advice and you decide what will work best with your child. Key to the effective parenting is to learn from mistakes and try not to repeat them. Time wears on, you will become more effective at handling your child's difficult behavior, and you will be able to teach your child valuable lessons that will last a lifetime. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a educational handout that you will receive, and I will also show it in the in this screen. Okay, you should have this educational handout. Um, we'll talk about this when we schedule our phone conversation. It's this educational handout it's called, What Would You Do? So below are some series of hypothetical scenarios involving parents and children who are at different stage of development. And we're gonna be talking about what would you do when this situation occurs? So something that I want you to understand is think about the development stage of each child and the options that are available to you in the light of the guidance to, for effective discipline that have been discussed in the class that we just um, held right now. So let's just do a, let's do a couple scenarios and we'll talk about it personally on the phone. So scenario number one, a mother is grocery shopping with a two and a half year old daughter when the child suddenly throws a temper tantrum because she cannot have that toy that she saw on one of the aisles. What are you going to do when this happens? So she's two and a half years old. She's having a tantrum, but you stated she cannot have it. What do you do? We'll talk about that one. Here's another scenario that we'll talk about. A four-year-old child has just finished playing with his toys in the living room. His father instructs him to pick up his toys, but the child refused, saying, I don't want to pick up my toys. What do you do? And you can write your scenarios. There's no wrong answers per se, but I do want to talk to you about these types of scenarios. So please have your scenarios ready when we do have our phone conversation. Scenario number three. Parents of a 10-year-old boy have told him that before he can go outside and play with his friends, he must complete his homework and do his chores. 
which consists of cleaning up his room, taking out the trash for two days, even after he has been reminded. The ten-year-old fails to complete his homework and cleans up his room before going out to play with his friends. What do you do? Alrighty. Our last scenario. A 14-year-old girl is invited over to her friend's house to watch a movie. Her parents tell her that she can go. However, they tell her she must be home by 8 p.m. When 8 p.m. rolls around, the child is not home. The parents become concerned about their daughter's whereabouts. Finally, around 9 p.m., the daughter walks through the front door. Her parents, glad that she's home safe, express their disappointment with their daughter's behavior. The daughter says she simply lost track of time. They tell her their daughter that she will be given a consequence because her, of her behavior. An argument ensures and the daughter screams out, I shouldn't have come home so early. You are being so unfair. What do you do? I would like to thank you for viewing this session. We hope that you learned something and I can't wait to speak with you over session two. Thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Joanne. I am the Family and Community Health County Extension Agent for Texas A&M AgroLife Extension, Hidalgo County. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.